Hi everyone and welcome back to the Learner Radiology YouTube channel. Today we're looking at case 15 from our brain tumor board review. This patient is a 55 year old man who has recurrent falls. We have some images from a CT. We have a bone window on the right here and a brain window on the left. This is a little bit of a subtle abnormality. It's kind of symmetric, which is always trouble for a neuroradiologist. Hopefully these reformatted images help you uh, kind of figure out maybe what's going on a little bit better. We have a sagittal reformat and a coronal reformat. I'm going to move on and show you some MR images. So here we have a flare, a T2, and a gradient through that lower cerebellum, kind of the fourth ventricular outflow tract. Hopefully by now you've, you're kind of seeing where the abnormality is and you're kind of finding it there. Here I have a movie for you, so I'm going to scroll through some of those images so you can see a little better. This is just scrolling through the flare. I'm going to show you that one more time here. All right, so maybe being able to kind of scroll through there like helps you a little bit. Maybe you can see stuff on maybe those images. Kind of gives you an idea of what's going on, maybe. All right, and finally we have a pre-contrast and post-contrast. If you're wondering which one you're looking at, uh, this is your pre-contrast. Look at the nasal mucosa here, no enhancement. The nasal mucosa here is enhancing. The vessels you see are enhancing, but it's a little bit less trustworthy. I kind of see in the region of that lesion, not, uh, not seeing a whole lot. So your question is, what's the most likely diagnosis in this case? So it looks like you have a tumor, perhaps it's interventricular, looks like it's along the fourth ventricular outflow tract without much enhancement. Your second question is, what is the characteristic histologic feature of CNS ependymomas? And so this is asking you for the histologic term associated with ependymomas. So there's a few histology terms that maybe you need to know. I put them on this list. One of them is associated with ependymomas. So maybe just be familiar with that because the ADR might, uh, might ask you something like that. In this case, we're looking at a subependymoma. These are WHO grade one intraventricular tumors arising from the subependema. These are frequently asymptomatic, but patients can get hydrocephalus associated with them, which can cause gait disturbances, nausea, vomiting, the treatment for these is resection. They have a great prognosis. When you see these, they tend to be intraventricular masses that are pretty well lobulated and uh, well defined. They're T2 hyperintense. They're kind of iso intense to white matter on T1, and they usually have minimal enhancement. And we've talked about this in lectures before. If you see an intraventricular minimally enhancing lesion, think about subependymoma because most of the other intraventricular lesions are enhancing. The common locations are the fourth ventricle as is seen in this case, but you can get them in the lateral ventricles and also along the course of the spinal cord. Now here you see the CT, and it was a little bit hard to see on the axial CT because it's in the midline, but you've got calcification in the fourth ventricular outflow tract. So there's a mass there, and that mass has calcification. Here on the MRI, you can see that there's a subtle abnormality there. It looks like you have a little rounded well demarcated mass in the fourth ventricular outflow tract just above the foramen of agendi. Here you see the foramen of Lushka on either side and on the gradient maybe you catch a little bit of that calcification that you could see on the CT. Now here's your pre and post contrast. You can really barely see the lesion. Uh, it's, it's kind of right in there. On your post contrast you don't have much enhancement. So again you have a non-enhancing intraventricular lesion. Think about subependymoma. Now your second question was about what's the characteristic histology of ependymomas. For that, it's perivascular pseudorosettes. And so here, these two terms at the top here, microvascular proliferation and pseudopalisading necrosis are associated with glioblastomas or high-grade gliomas. This multi-layered rosettes are associated with a formerly uh, PNET, but they're now called embryonal tumors with multi-layered rosettes. So that uh, makes that a little bit easier. But perivascular pseudorosettes are the ones associated with ependymomas. So thanks for tuning into this case today. We're kind of getting closer to the end of the brain tumor series. So I appreciate you guys uh, checking out the channel, uh, coming by the website, and subscribing and liking the videos if uh, you enjoyed them. Thanks a lot.